Hello and welcome to the Wellaverse with Tim and Chris. Hello, time for episode four. We're loving this. And we're getting a lot of positive feedback, aren't we, Tim? Yeah. It's weird running into people and they're like, I listen to your podcast. Like, well, yeah, thanks. That's good. What do you reckon? (laughs) No, it's actually really, really good. I mean, we're doing this for ourselves as much as for anyone else um, to make sure that we keep learning and keep searching for the best information we can about wellness. And it's just really great to have other people responding to it. So, yay. Plus, we get to stand on soapboxes. Yes, that's always fun. Oh, first up, Chris. Oh, yes. What have you been putting your energy into this week? Ah, this week I've been putting in energy, putting my energy into trying to catch up on sleep. (laughs) So we had a really early morning last weekend where we got up to catch a flight home from Melbourne. And also, I think it was Monday or Tuesday night, it was so hot that I just could not for the life of me sleep. So I had maybe two hours that night and that just knocked me flat for the rest of the week. So I've actually been putting energy into slowing down and catching up. What about you, Tim? Well, something I've been putting my energy into is riding my new bike to work. Oh, you got a new bike. I did. Tell us Thanks about it. I suppose it's a self-bought birthday present. I've just been riding my little bush bike <laughs> and um, trying to learn how to ride slowly because you can't just fang it all the way to work and then be in the work zone. So mm. maybe that's what I'm working on, riding to work slowly. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Okay. So this week's topic, um, it's probably something that we're actually going to do quite often. What we've titled it is Fitness Mythbusters. And I think our, uh, it's actually a response to someone um, who follows us who requested that we do this. They said, oh, can you please do an episode about um, the common misconceptions that people have about fitness? And I thought, oh, yeah, but that episode's going to be like five hours long. <laughs> um, so what we decided was that we'd just choose two myths um, to talk about each and possibly do more episodes like this in the future. So if you do have any common fitness myths, if you're in the fitness industry or if you're someone who's trying to work out and or eat healthily, for example, but you feel like there's just some conflicting info, send that request our way and we will bust those open. Um, Basically though, just before we continue, we're just going to clarify that the things that we're talking about aren't necessarily just flat out wrong. Um, They're sort of common ideas that people have surrounding fitness and health um, and ideas that get perpetuated, but we chose them because we think um, that they're not straightforward and that there are things that you need to consider or know about um, Hmm. with all of these issues. I suppose the reason myths are perpetuated because there's always a a grain of truth in them. Yeah. And the trick is just knowing you know, when to, to use the myth or which direction to push the thing in so that it's actually helpful for you. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, we hope that this chat helps you. Um, all right. You go first. Okay. <laughs> myth number one is girls will bulk if they lift weight. Um, and originally, actually, this was Tim's idea when we were brainstorming. He was like, oh, this is a really good one. And I was like, yes, because so many of my girlfriends... Um, have said to me in the past, oh, no, I don't want to lift weights. I don't want to become too masculine or muscly or manly. Um, And, okay, like I can see why people have this misconception, um, but the reason I want to talk about it is because I believe that lifting weights has so many amazing benefits for women and that, um, you know, this fear or this misconception is actually prohibiting a lot of women from accessing a really great type of workout for them. Mm. Um, So yeah, it's worth talking about. So, okay. First of all, why, why does this myth exist? Why do people have this idea? Do you think Tim? Mm. My opinion 
uh, that women think that you know they don't want to lift weights because they'll get bulky is because for most people the the reason exercise exists is to help them to lose weight mm. or yeah to control what their body looks like yeah. Yeah. and those people who are trying to lose weight associate lifting things with just getting bigger biceps Mm -hmm. and their main motivation is well I want to lose weight get a dress size down or two but if I'm lifting weights I'll get bigger so that would be a waste Mm. of time so they say I don't want to get bulky I'm already big enough yeah my whole motivation is to get small I need cardio like strip strip my body away not put more body on yeah yeah which is quite a common um thing that I hear girls say to me um but Yes, I think as well, there are some very extreme cases of women out there, especially um, in the social media land, and other than your everyday woman might look at those pictures, so we're talking about you know bikini models or CrossFit chicks, um, those women, yes, are incredibly muscular and they probably love it, you know, that's what they want, but the average woman sort of looks at that in fear and thinks, well, if that's what weightlifting does to you, oh, I don't even want to step near a dumbbell, you know, Mm -hmm. because they, you know, we want to be, some of us want to be feminine in appearance. You know, we don't want to lose that aspect of ourselves. Yeah. So Um, with my example of that psychology of, I I want to be a bit smaller. I've been told I'm too sort of big and I I need to lose weight. Mm. Well, weightlifting will help you to do that first before it ever bulks you up. Yeah. um, Unless you're taking anabolic steroids or something like that. Yeah, absolutely. And so I guess that's the first thing I wanted to talk about with this myth is that um, it's actually a lot of effort. It takes a lot of concerted effort to grow your muscles in size. Um, there's all different ways that your muscles respond to weightlifting and it depends on the kind of weightlifting you're doing. So the rep range and the weight itself, um, whether it's, you know, high reps, light weight or low reps, heavy weight or somewhere in between. Uh, it also depends on what you're eating as well. Um, and you know, for women, we, we don't have the same hormonal makeup as men. So, you know, already we are less, Likely to. Less likely to put on lots of muscle mass. Um, we have less testosterone, more estrogen. That's the way we are. Having said that, within each individual woman, those levels are different. Some women do put on muscle more easily than men. But my point of this kind of what I'm saying at the moment is there's lots and lots of different types of weightlifting. And only if you are doing all the right things over a long, consistent period of time will you actually bulk up. And yeah, you'd have to work your butt off if you actually wanted to. So when a girl says to me, oh, no, I don't want to go and lift weights. I don't want to start lifting weights because in case I'll wake up tomorrow and and be like, yeah, Yeah. huge. It's like, well, no, you won't. You won't actually, unless you are really, really trying hard to do that, that's not going to happen to you. Um, I'll just, I'll give you a bit of an example. So um, a kilo of muscle takes 3000 extra calories of energy to create. Um, I did a bit of research and that's the general figure I found. Now in kilojoules, which is what we use in Australia, that's 12 and a half thousand. Or um, if you think about it in terms of food, five and a half Big Macs. And that's on top of what you normally eat. Um, And so you can actually see why, you know, when men, for example, are trying to make these incredible muscular gains, not only do they have to train like hours a day and the right kind of weightlifting, but they also have to eat a heck of a lot of extra energy. And for a lot of us smaller women out there who are thinking, oh, I don't want to lift weights, I might bulk up, it would be really, really hard for you to actually um, grow your muscles in a way that will make you look manly. <laughs> um, yeah, and there's plenty of awesome weightlifting that you can be doing Um which is actually just going to make you strong mm. and mobile. And yeah, it's just going to improve your body composition. Um, less fat, more lean muscle mass, which I think most people would really enjoy if they experienced it. But yeah, I think this fear really holds a lot of women back from getting strong. Mm. Um, another, And I suppose societally... Oh, yeah. that's that's another driver as well it's like i as a woman this is my perspective on the whole thing <laughs> I, I i don't want to be 
putting myself in a, a manly position because that would be socially unacceptable. Yeah. It's like, what, I'm not allowed to be strong? And yeah. I, I think that's changing. Oh, it is uh, changing. And it's it's so good that it is changing um, because, like, women are capable of achieving such amazing things. And I don't think s- sort of stereotypes of certain activities being for men and certain ones being for women I don't actually think that helps in a lot of ways because yeah if you're afraid to go and lift weights because you're a woman you are really missing out on a whole stack of benefits for your body for the short term and for the long term well in most sort of fitness gym sort of 24 hour access type places and the girls are on the cardio machines yeah. and the big dudes are sweating over yeah. Um, with the cable pulleys mm. and the free weights. And it's just, that's the culture yeah. of those and, places. But you know what I think as well? I think the very few select women who are lifting weights do tend to be those quite extreme ones um, who have really like developed a passion for it. And they've got some very specific goals that they're trying to achieve. It might be they particularly want to, um, you know, be in a muscle comp or so, like those yeah. those are the women you typically see at your gym who are in the weight section and i think a lot of women look at them and think whoa i don't want to be like that like i don't want to look that muscly so therefore i can't lift weights yeah, well i'm over here with yeah the I'll, I'll stay on the treadmill and where it's, i'm not going to get creeped on by yeah. all the guys and it's a shame <laughs> it's it's a real shame because i lift weights and if you've seen me um I'm definitely not masculine or bulky. And I, since I've been lifting weights, um, I joined a CrossFit gym of maybe, what, five months ago now? Mm. Since I've been lifting weights, I've experienced all those things that people have always told me are awesome about lifting weights, and yet I don't look masculine. So I think... A um, couple more years, maybe? <laughs> I think... Or oh, maybe, some, maybe some steroids. <laughs> yeah. I think... What you should know about women and weightlifting is this. It has huge benefits for your health. It can improve bone density. It will increase your strength. Who wants more dense bones? Okay, so as in your bones aren't going to break by the time you're 60. Yeah, so as a physio, that's yeah. really important to me yeah. because I see people, older women, postmenopausal, who have just sneezed and broken a rib yeah. or you know, tripped over low velocity impact and just shattered their whole pelvis. And it's because a combination of diet and exercise Mm. and genetics, Mm. but the modifiable ones are what they've been eating and the appropriate sort of strength load they've put through their skeleton over their life. And it's just horrific. And that's what you you could be doing right now to have a positive impact on that. You could be going out and putting some force through your muscles and your bones. And it's fun. And it's super fun. Um, also, you improve your mind-muscle connection. So that's there's actually two different types of gains when we lift weights that happen. Um, there's the neural gains, which is where your brain gets better at sending the signals to your muscles to do the work. Um, and that's literally just through creating those pathways um, of those signals. And unless you do it regularly, that's not going to happen. Um and the other type of response that your muscles have is the um, metabolic response. So they improve in their ability to utilize energy. Yeah, your actual muscles. Yes, the actual change. Yeah. M- meat of the muscle itself, um, which is awesome. And I mean, I think this is an important point, Tim. We, because our society tends to be very fixated on exercising to make the body look a certain way. Um, when you work out, your muscles can get stronger, they can get bigger, they can get smaller, but you can't actually change the overall shape and proportions of your body. Like, yes, your body, my body looks quite different now um, as a weightlifter than mm. it did when I was a marathon runner. But it's still your body. But it's still Just, my shape. It's still got yeah. my little quirks. It's still got the things that I think, oh, well, that's not very good because it's not. Norm, someone else. Like someone else. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, don't focus too much on, oh, I want my body to look like this. Think I want my body to be its strongest and healthiest 
and think of that as a thing for your life, not for right now. Because either way, we're all going to end up wrinkly um, and old, but quality of life that whole time is, I think, what people should be more focused on. It's just healthier for your mind. Yeah, well, all, all are good things. Oh, yeah, you know? and it's great to love what you look like. But I guarantee you, if you're a woman and you go and lift weights, you're, you're probably going to just really love what you look like as a result. You'll feel stronger. You'll feel more coordinated, more balanced. You'll have more power, more mobility. Um, and, yeah, if you are lifting weights... Um, it's actually probably going to help maintain your weight or manage your weight rather than make you gain weight because it increases the metabolic activity in your muscles themselves and that means your daily burn is slightly higher. So anyway, weightlifting, get behind it. Go and lift one. And if 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 you are intimidated, that's really fine. I mean, it's hard to know what you're doing, I think, in the gym unless you've got a personal trainer or unless you've got a group class that you join so i'd actually recommend doing that if you yeah if you want to start lifting weights find out how to do it properly because yeah it's really worthwhile cool agreed okay number two (laughs) myth number two tim said number two (laughs) myth number two is banana bread is healthy what It's not. What? It just depends on your definition of healthy. And the reason I wanted to talk about this is... Or who made the banana bread. Well, the reason I wanted to talk about this is there's just been a new cafe opened up at work. And in the lunchroom, the ladies are like, oh, it's great. The the wife of the person who's running the cafe is making homemade banana bread. Oh, it's so fantastic. It's only $2. I was like, oh, that, that looks... Like, it looks great. You just have to be careful that you don't gain weight eating so much. I love it. how you're telling the ladies at work, be careful that you don't have a moment on the lips forever on the hips. <laughs> and Tim's weight management advice to his colleagues, that's lovely. Continue. There was discussion. <laughs> and they couldn't believe that there would be energy in this healthy homemade thing. Mm. It's like, well, mm. yeah, in the size of that slice you've got there, it's probably about the same energy as a Big Mac. They're like, no, mm. but it's homemade, so it's healthy, right? <laughs> it's like, well, you're all this January New Year's resolution talking about trying to lose weight, and you're literally eating two and a half thousand kilojoules just there. Mm. Like, that's that's a good sized meal. Yeah. So. Banana bread is healthy is a huge myth because I think of the halo effect of banana is a fruit. Eat as much fruit as you like. Mm -hmm. Just go nuts and don't think about it. And uh, yeah, I think, so this myth, Tim, it's not specifically about banana bread. I think what Tim's getting at is, you know, you might think, yeah, my diet's pretty healthy, but the myth, I guess, is that there are, is a lot of things that people don't know about food and that people just just totally don't, like they just have a blind spot. Yes, maybe yeah. the myth could better be if it has some kind of one healthy ingredient in it, go nuts. Or if I, if I just like it, then, it's then fine. maybe it's fine. Yeah. So as far as the numbers go, if you went to McDonald's in Australia and bought one slice of banana bread with butter on it... This is so interesting. There is 2,760 kilojoules just worth of energy in your banana bread with butter. Yep. So that's about 200 grams of food that you've eaten. Mm -hmm. You could instead get a Big Mac and save yourself 600 Mm. kilojoules at um, 2,180 kilojoules for your similar weight, 200 gram Big Mac. As in the Big Mac is less energy. Less energy by about 20%. Mm -hmm. Um, Or for the same weight of food, 200 grams, you could have two medium sized bananas, which would get you in at 760 kilojoules, which is 2,000 kilojoules less than the banana bread. And it's a third of the Big Macs. So, okay, a Big Mac is six big bananas. Yes. Wow, try sitting down and eating six big bananas in a row. So if (laughs) energy sort of intake is your only measure of a healthy diet, then banana bread isn't healthy. But if you only ate bananas... For your entire diet. That wouldn't be healthy either. <laughs> Just because it's lower in energy doesn't mean it's yeah. better for Oh, yeah. Uh, but, but it's also interesting to see the amounts of fats and carbs and proteins in the things 
that Tim's talking about. Like people I think would think, oh yeah, banana bread, banana, healthy. The banana bread, <laughs> it actually has sort of less balanced macros and sort of less overall nutrition than the Big Mac. Like in some ways. In some ways. Yeah. So you've I mean, got a pretty it's similar. Even... It's even got a similar saturated fat content. Yeah. Like we looked and we, because we we know this, we're so enlightened. But then we actually looked at the actual values, and I was pretty shocked. Like banana bread is up there with one of the least healthy things you can. Oh, it's a great eat. energy dense thing oh, if you are yeah. malnourished. Yeah, I guess. Take that and send if you're it to starving. the troops. Yeah. But um. Yeah, people... Okay, the reason I'm fired up about this <laughs> is because of the angst that people have yes. trying to lose weight based on just a hint of understanding mm. about what's in food. And they, they try their hardest and they put effort and stress and emotion and energy into something mm. without being able to just look up the value yeah. and understand what they're doing. So that's that's where I'm at on this. Like I don't I don't really mind personally if someone weighs less or more. It doesn't yeah. change their value as a person. Oh, and if you but want if their eat, whole goal yeah. is just to lose some weight, but they're tearing their hair out because mm-hmm. they've been following this diet, but every morning tea having a big slice of banana bread and a large cappuccino and just not understanding and just saying, why, why why can't why, I lose why, weight, why? you know? That's not healthy. Yeah. Or like, oh, I chose the blueberry muffin over the chocolate one. That's a healthy choice. Like, I should be healthy. Yes. It's like, well, no, 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 no. So. And, and we're also not saying don't eat banana bread. No. That's it's not just, what this is about. It's just that people tend to underestimate their sometimes foods, yeah. both the energy in them and also mm-hmm. how often they actually have them. Yeah. They have a banana bread at morning tea. They have a little biscuit after lunch because it was there in the box. And mm-hmm. they have a can of Coke with dinner. Yeah. And, and these things just sort of slip under but, the but, radar and they add up. So the advice is um, if weight management is something that uh, you're struggling with or you need to understand more about, I think it's a really valuable thing that doesn't mm-hmm. have to get you know blown out of proportion, but to keep a food diary yeah. for one or two weeks just to understand, What's wow, your food? there's more energy yeah. in banana bread than Big Macs. And that would happen for so many different foods and just help yeah. you to understand where your habits are at and, mm-hmm. and what's going on. And look, this works as well um, for healthy foods, not just for unhealthy foods. Like a lot of people say, but I, I just I eat so healthy. And like they're chowing down on a whole avocado on their salad at lunch. And people, you know, avocado is amazing for you, but it's quite energy dense. So if you're, you know, a 60 kilo woman trying to lose a bit of weight you don't want to be eating a whole avocado on your lunch because that's half your day's, more than half your day's energy intake. Hmm. Um, so it is worth finding out what your energy needs are. Um, there's a really great website actually that you can go to. It's called... Um, 8700. 8700 or just Google my ideal figure and figure meaning number of kilojoules. And that will actually give you a bit of a guideline. And I think people do get afraid of this of saying, hey, go and find out how much energy is in your food. People are afraid of that because a lot of people do get obsessive and carried away with it. Mm. Um, but I, I think there is a way to balance that. You just need to think of it as, oh, I just, I just want to be more aware of what I'm putting into my body. Mm. I want to be more aware of how much pasta do I actually need, how much is going to get used, and yeah. how much will just get stored. Yeah. Because that's that's all fat is. It's just the energy you didn't use and that you ate. It's something that we need to understand when there are so many packaged processed foods that are a part of a normal diet yeah. that we'll come across. Um, having to count calories uh, or kilojoules or your energy intake um, is not as much of a, a factor if you're eating whole, Fresh foods. normal, yeah. real food. So true, true. lean meats, yeah. vegetables, all the things that are actually on you know, your food recommendations. Yeah. Um, people love to bag out the Australian Dietary Guideline pyramid or plate and say there's too many bits of whatever, but most Australians' diet don't doesn't look like that. No. They don't eat enough veggies. Yeah. Um, they don't even eat the minimum amount of fruit, um, yeah. you know, and what they do eat is highly processed and really energy-dense. Yeah. Mm. yeah, it's a good myth. I mean, it's a good one to... 
just reflect on. All right. Uh, it leads really well into my next myth. Um, this is an attitude that a lot of people have that I don't think is very helpful. Uh, and that's, I guess, why I want to talk about it. So this is the myth. I train or I exercise. Therefore, I can eat whatever I want. Now, I think the reason that I really want to talk about this one is because, A, I hear it a heck of a lot and I see it a lot on social media. You know, <laughs> I run so that I can eat pasta or I run so that I can eat donuts or whatever. And, you know, you hear it amongst a few people at the gym, you know, oh, that's a great workout. Now I'm off to Macca's or, you know, I ran 10K, so I deserve five Snickers, uh, you know, whatever. Um, I think the attitude itself isn't helpful as just a personal characteristic to have. Um, for one thing, it leads to mindless eating, which really isn't helpful for the inside of your body. Um, it's not helpful for your training goals. <laughs> Food is really important. It builds your body. And if you're not caring about what you're putting in it, um, you might have a body that looks okay or that maintains its weight, but what's going on inside is a different story. Um, it leads to uh, wastage of food and maybe not the best choices in terms of environmental impact. You know, the people who think, oh yeah, rip it up at the gym, I'm going to go and get my 400 gram rump steak. A lot has to happen for that 400 gram steak to get on your plate um, that is not very helpful to the environment to say the least and you don't need that 400 gram steak it's not actually what a, maybe a, a sixth of it will contribute towards benefiting your body and the rest is absolute excess so it's just not a great attitude to have I think um, and another one is you know it just shows a lack of self-control and this sort of indulgent I don't know, behavior, which it's just not really nice. Greediness isn't really nice. I think we could all benefit from being a little bit more humble with our choices. And I'm guilty of this too. I make, like you see on social media, these massive towering freak shakes or like burgers with cheese. And it's like, yeah, I'm going to hit the gym later or I gymmed all week and now it's my treat day. And it's just like, yeah, but when did this become okay? Mm. And uh, how much of that are you actually going to eat? How much is going to get thrown in the bin? Like what? It, it's just not really, uh, I don't think it's helpful to anyone. Mm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it also just shows that if you are just thinking about exercise as a way to offset whatever you're eating, I don't think that's a really healthy mindset to be in. Um so yes, there's energy in and energy out. We all burn a certain amount of energy every day without doing anything. Again, you can go to that website, My Ideal Figure. Um, and yeah, so without working out, we burn, uh, if you're a small woman like me, you'd burn about 6,000 and a half kilojoules in a day, um, which means that's how much I can sort of eat and maintain my current weight. If you didn't move. If I didn't exercise. Yeah. Yeah, if I was relatively sedentary. Um, a large man might be more around 11,000 kilojoules per day that they can eat or that they just are burning just by existing. Um, so yeah, it does depend how heavy you are as to what you need. But what people often get wrong is that exercise doesn't actually add that much to your daily burn. Um, unless you are out there running a marathon every day, it's likely that your 45 minutes to an hour in the gym is burning anywhere between um, 500 and 2,000 kilojoules maximum. And, you know, Tim was saying before, a slice of banana bread is almost 3,000 kilojoules. So you can imagine if you've gone for a half an hour run, um, it's likely if you're a woman, you know, who weighs between 50 and 60 kilos, you've probably only burnt 600 to 700 kilojoules, um, but you might have... Um, that idea in your brain, oh, I ran, so I'm going to order the pasta for dinner or I'm going to also have dessert and this and that. And you can see how it only would take one or two of these, oh, I ran so I can have this um, and you've already just blown well past whatever your run took mm. in terms of energy. Which which is a problem <laughs> if you're trying to lose weight. Yes, yes. You know. And 
I think as well it's a problem because of the motivation it places on the exercise. Yeah, and the negative psychology yeah, of it yeah. because I, I run so I can eat this quickly becomes, oh, I ate a thing. So now I, I need to punish to. myself yeah. with some yeah. exercise because I was naughty for the food that I ate and I need to yeah. burn off that energy. And so you lose the joy of actually yeah. living and moving and doing things. Yeah. And you're, yeah, your movement becomes a punishment. And you're just a slave a to the fact that you wake up and you have to eat food yeah. every day because you're a human being. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's just not really helpful. It's really useful to not worry when you exercise about how much energy you're burning, I think. I think you will get a lot further and you'll make a lot more progress with your workouts if you think of the quality of the workout itself rather than... How much energy is this burning? Does it mean I can then go and have five beers this weekend? Um, you might want to have the five beers anyway, but my advice is don't attach them to the exercise because it's it's actually not going to help you um, to reach your goals, whether that be weight loss or whether you're actually training for a certain purpose. If you're thinking, oh, like I really want to achieve X, Y, Z performance wise in the gym, I want to improve my deadlift, I want to do this, I want to do that you actually need to really think about what you're eating. Mm. Like you can't say, oh, I can eat whatever I want because I train. It's actually like, well, no, if you want to be serious about training, you Those actually... Those things go together. Yeah. The yeah. food is Like the my fuel. good movement is supported by my good fuel. And Absolutely. my good diet supports my good movement because I've got, mm-hmm. you know, healthy, stable energy levels and I've got um, good quality building blocks in my body and things are going well yeah. rather than just yeah. binging on rubbish. Yeah. And think about all the other things that food does. I mean, energy is only one aspect of food. It's got all the As vitamins. Weight management yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That stuff. It's yeah. got all the vitamins and minerals that your body thrives on. Um, so if you're not getting them, if you're exercising heaps and eating chicken nuggets, cheeseburgers and beer, or just bananas. Or or just bananas. But yeah. Actually, there is a marathoner who does that. <laughs> but um, yeah, point being um, your hair might fall out or you might get kidney failure or liver damage or um, you might not have enough iron or you might not be able to sleep well. Your energy levels might suck. So there are so many reasons to eat well besides managing your weight um, that, yeah, I think it would be great if people focused on that a little more. Before Tim goes on with his next myth, sorry, a really cute little Instagram account that I think you should take a look at other than mine by the way it's at living moving being <laughs> is <laughs> little self plug there shameless <laughs> um, social underscore calories it's just a very cute little way of just revealing how much energy is actually in the food Explain the that you might be choosing okay so it's just on a beautiful coloured background it has a number of kilometres at the bottom and that is, you know, how far you need to run. And then it's got a picture of something delicious or just any random type of food, you know. It could be half an avocado. It could be a burger. It could be an ice cream. It could be a lollipop. But it equates all the food um, to the relative amount of distance you would have to run in order to burn that item of food off. And it's a really cute little eye-opening way to show you just, just how much running you'd have to be doing to offset all that food you're eating um and yeah if you take that information and you're like oh no that means i have to run heaps that's not what that account is about the account is just about showing you you know do you like are you going to use the food are you going to enjoy the food you are the one who makes the decisions about what goes in and yeah just make the decisions for the right reasons very good oh thanks The last myth is no pain, no gain. Yep. So I both like and loathe no pain, no gain (laughs) because there are instances where no pain, no gain is really useful. But for some people, it's their life motto and it's just a way they set themselves up for boom and bust. They go at it January 1, um, no pain, no gain, until their knee blows out and they're in so much pain that they just can't gain anymore. Mm. 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 So what I think is no pain, no gain 
can be used if you're sitting on the couch and you think I don't want to get up and saying to yourself, no pain, no gain, gets you up and, and gets you out the door. Yes. Okay. Other than that, I, I can't really see a point for no pain, no gain. I think the reason no pain, no gain is popular is because we have a glorification of being busy, revving things to the max and being overtired. Mm. And in relation to training and exercise, people don't understand the idea of stimulate, don't annihilate Mm -hmm. and the overload effect. Exercise is a stress on the body. Mm. But if we're trying to get better at doing something, whether um, you know increasing our aerobic capacity or becoming stronger, you need to test those systems out. You need to push them a little. They don't, it doesn't have to be to 100 110% of what you're capable of. It just needs to be some stimulation of those systems. Mm. And then there needs to be time for good food to go in, time so that processes can be you know taken place inside the body and then then after time you get stronger so exercise in most ways makes your body weaker it's the recovery the nutrition and the time that makes you stronger yeah i think um i think this is a really interesting one because it makes me think of reminding people why they're exercising Um, If you are an Olympian or you're training to be an athlete or your job is to be fit and you're relying on it for your career, um, then there is a certain, I think there's a higher element of no pain, no gain, high risk, high reward for these people, right? They do push themselves a lot harder and a lot further than what the average person who's working out does. Um, Also important to remember, though, they've built up to that. Um, They didn't just do that one day. You know, they didn't increase their training schedule to be insane overnight. Um, I remember when I was really unfit looking at Michelle Bridges' training schedule that she put in her book, um, one of her many books, and I remember comparing it to what I was doing and thinking, man, like, I thought I was exercising heaps, but I suck. You know, she's like running 10Ks a day and doing a one and a half hour weights training session. And, you know, she didn't wake up one day and decide to do that volume and intensity of training. She worked up to that over many, many years. Yep. And I have now worked up to quite a large volume of training over many, many years. But you don't then advocate that someone else takes on that exact same load as you. Their body may not be up to that or ready for that yet. Um, so there is, yeah, there's a difference between no pain, no gain and actually taking calculated, manageable, um, I I guess risks or, um, yeah, pushing your boundaries a little in training. And for most people, a better phrase or life motto for exercise rather than no pain, no gain is consistency is key. Yep. Because if you can show up and just do something most days of the week, in a year's time, you will be so much further ahead than the person who just thought no pain, no gain, and just blaze of glory was only able to do it for a short time. So consistency is key. You need to give yourself time and not compare yourself to other people, but just work from where you're at right now. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, think about why you're doing the movement in the first place. You don't... like. People around you might be saying, oh, no pain, no gain, but you're not them. You're you. Think about why you want to move. Um, And yeah, if you do have some pretty high aspirations with your exercise, um, figure out how you're going to do it, if it's achievable, and work for it. But don't, uh, the mentality of I must be destroying my body in order to be making progress is probably just going to get you hurt and Mm. lead to derailing your training really yeah i was thinking of an example of uh, someone's training in a group scenario and there's a trainer going amongst the group and they're sort of you know come on you can do it push a little bit come on Mm -hmm. i suppose each athlete each person would be taking that slightly differently just hearing it and 
processing and, t- and interpreting differently. But if the train is a good one, what they mean and what the, the people will understand is that they're being encouraged to put their effort into moving well and doing it better. Mm-hmm. Don't just flop around and do mm-hmm. another 50 reps. Come on, grit your teeth, keep it good. Yeah. You know, do Engage it better. Engage the core, put make it effort quality. Into that. Yeah. And, and that, I suppose, depends on your definition of what pain is. You know, is, yeah. is pain challenge or discomfort or is it injury? Yeah. And yeah. and there is an element of, you know, you, you're going to have to actually challenge yourself a little bit, but it's a, it's a controlled, smart, mm. you, you're doing Informed it for a purpose challenge. kind yeah. of challenge. Yeah. And, and you're not doing it to impress someone else, I think, is a really important um, part. Uh, we're all capable of different things and we're at different points. And I know at CrossFit, when I get carried away thinking I should be able to lift you know, the RX, like as written in the workout, I've got to take into account that I weigh a lot (coughs) less than everyone else. (coughs) I just tried to drink quietly and it didn't happen. (laughs) I have to take into account that I weigh a lot less than everyone else and that that means I just physically um, can't lift as much, maybe. Um, And that's got to be okay. I can't just let my ego take over and think, well, I just really want to do this RX because I may hurt myself trying. Um, But that's also when you listen to the advice of your trainers. Um, You know, they're actually educated. They're there to support you. And if you've got a decent one, they're going to have a pretty good idea of what you're safely capable of and they'll help you take calculated risks with your training. Um, uh, Yeah, they might give you the confidence you need to tackle a little bit of a heavier weight load or run a few kilometers further or whatever. Um, but they should also be guiding you within the parameters of what's reasonable for your body. Mm. Most people go too hard. Yeah. Most people burn out. Yeah. Very few people maintain their, um, grand plans to do all Mm. these things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the smart advice is to, to start and chip away. Chip away. Start as you mean to continue. Yep. Figure out what that means, and it may change mm. over time, but um, short term mm. never fixes anything. Uh, what, uh, one more thing I think about when I think of no pain, no gain is a lot of people say to me, oh, like I don't have time to do wussy things like yoga because I need to be burning energy. So I've got to be doing something intense, you know, and like hit workouts. They're awesome. They're becoming so popular though because people think, yeah, like go really, really, really hard and that's the way to burn the most amount of energy in the least mm-hmm. amount of time. It's like why, why again are we just thinking about burning energy? Like there are so many benefits to those sort of, I guess, less intense in terms of heart rate but very intense types of activities like yoga and, you know, I don't know if you've ever done movement classes or dancing. They are just a different kind of intense really and all those different intensities can benefit our body in different ways um so it yeah variety is also key so if you're saying oh no like that workout didn't feel challenging enough it's it's actually all right to have movement in mm-hmm. your week that yeah. isn't Depends making on you sweat what your <laughs> definition of gain is yeah you that's know, like it if you enjoyed it if you you know you just wake up and you just can't wait till you get to do that thing yeah then that's pretty good gain. Yeah, it's amazing gain. Yeah. Yeah, but if all you're thinking is, oh, that yoga session is only gonna... half a piece yeah, of banana only bread. Only half a piece. That's right. <laughs> then it's just like, yeah. And if you're thinking, oh, like, I remember when I started running, I, I ran seven Ks, and it was the first time I'd ever done it, and I thought it was amazing, and it was so super hard, and that was like a no pain, no gain thing. I forced myself to finish those seven Ks, and I remember the psychology of my running in the week following that. I thought, hey, if I only run five or six Ks, that's not good enough. I should be able to run seven or more every time now. And that's just dumb. (laughs) Like, it's not helpful for my improvement in training. It's just, it was just a silly mentality to have. You do not have to be suffering the whole time. In fact, with running, it's all about just clocking up the Ks. Safe, nice kilometers. That's, uh, you know, if you're thinking about your form and your technique and you are adding up those Ks, doesn't have to be fast, doesn't have to be killing you, chip away. 
Yeah. You'll get better over time. I think running is a bit more of a metaphor for life than most other sports because like you live your life the whole of your life and it's got to be sustainable. It's it's got to be something that you can wake up and do again tomorrow. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and something that you enjoy doing. Otherwise you're not going to do it for very long. And there's nothing to say you can't enjoy challenge. I enjoy uh, the heck out of some of our CrossFit workouts that are super hard, but they're safe hard because I'm in a guided environment. So, yeah. That's our four fitness myths. Yeah. So plenty more to come. I don't know what next week's topic is yet. Send us your requests. We'll take anything. Check uh-huh. us out on Instagram at the underscore Wellaverse. And at Living Moving Me. Or the Fit Physio. Uh-huh. And uh, this um, podcast was sponsored by us. So, yeah, we're pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, seriously, actually, we do a whole bunch of different stuff, Tim and I, um, in the wellness universe. Um, we do face-to-face training in the Lake Macquarie area. We do online guides, um, a bunch of free ones and a bunch of awesome ones that you can buy that are going to just be really helpful for getting your fitness and health on track. Um, And also we're doing Bali Escapes this year, which we're so excited about. Um, But yeah, obviously you guys are getting a vibe for the way we view fitness and health. So we really hope that our chats are helping you. And thanks so much to all the people who are subscribing and giving us feedback that really helps if you um do a review on itunes that gets the word out there um and spreads the podcast puts it higher up on the list so that other people can find it so i think that's all we wanted to talk about that's all i've got cool all right well we'll see you later guys thanks for listening to the welliverse (laughs)